I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Let's go in and meet them. For the flank position in the Northern team, we have Knightly. He is 1700 rated and Cybran in orange. Behind him, we have I Make War on You. He's 1400 rated, Seraphim in grey. In the navy position, or at least what I assume is going to be the navy position, we have Karl Marx, and everyone's favourite communist has gone Eon, 1600 rated, in brown. At the back, in the air position, this is Furcotia. He's 1700 rated, UEF, in Mountain Dew Green. And last but not least, for the Northern team, here's BJ. He is 1000 rated, playing UEF, in Burgundy. And their mirrors. In the flank position, in this fetching electric pink, we have Sizalon. I'm going to call him Sai this game. He's 1800 rated, he's Cybran, and we've already covered that he's an electric pink. Behind him, this is Cups. Cups is 1400 rated and Seraphim, he's in white. In their central naval position, walking off into the distance there, this is Signal Runner. He's 1500 rated, he's Cybran, and he's in dark blue. At the back in the air position, but already with his com walking off into the distance there, someone add the Incredible Hulk walking away music, you know you want to, we have none other than Brink of Insanity. 1800 rated, playing UEF in yellow. And last but not least for the southern team, this is Vuhodam. He is a thousand rated and Cybran in dark green. Quick look at the map. Couple of reclaim clusters here which are slightly larger than the rest but nothing really important. The main feature is going to be this river running across the middle with a big lake. So naval control is going to be really important here. We have an early bomber out from BJ. Now, sending it in this direction should be pretty clever because if you pick up these expanding engineers, they're going to take a lot longer to be replaced than if you picked off engineers in the main base. The bomber's been seen though, I see a ping going. Is that bomber landing? That bomber was landing there and that might have cost it a kill. In fact, it might have cost it its life as well as this fighter from Cups, this Inti, locks on in it and kills it. We've also got a bomber coming out here from Knightley. We'll see if that gets any more work done. But, early look at the Navy. While Signal and... Is that Knightley? Yeah, that's Knightley. Are building early naval yards. Sai has already built his naval yard and has a sub coming across here. It's obviously looking to deny the northern team entry into the water, but it's heading to the wrong place. It needs to come over here. It just doesn't know that yet. However, what do we have over here? Quick note to say that Signal has also got a naval yard down, so early navy dominance looking like it might be going the way of the southern team. Anyway, this drop, Engineers, from I Make War On You, and he's planning to land them here. However, we do have a transport expanding from Cups. It's put some guys down here, and it's putting one guy up on this plateau. But that's four coming in from I Make War. Has he been seen yet? Well, he must have been seen. Have they noticed? That sub, meanwhile, has taken out the engineer. There's a frigate coming to support it. We might see Knightley getting locked out of the water here. These engineers from I Make War, 
they descend upon Cup's engineer and they get the reclaim off but Cups has seen it and he sends a tank and a Selene round to get them and he's dropping a tank and a Selene <clears throat> dropping them straight onto the engineers but I think that factory is going to go up before these two have the chance to kill it will it be enough for I make war to establish a beachhead we're going to see quick look over here, I didn't see what that bomber got, but it hasn't killed anything super important. All these mixes have gone up. Little bomber from Signal here is taking out the expanding engineers for marks, leaving the only means of production in his hands on this side being his com. Brink has moved over here, but he hasn't put up any factories, whereas BJ's already got a factory up. Speaking of factories, this one did go up and did get a couple of fans out, but I think that there's now enough here from Cups to shut it down. However, that was a fun little drop and will have distracted Cups a bit, making him spend a bit of extra resource in that direction. And look at this, six minutes into the game and the northern team is locked out of the pond with frigates and subs sneaking their way around everywhere that could be pretty bad remember i said at the start that naval control was going to be pretty important well here it is being important and taking advantage of the fact that there aren't any enemy frigates to stop them cups has dropped a bunch of zooies near the coast owned by marks and he can send them in not worried about enemy frigates countering them, frigates being a great counter to Zoe's. And we have another drop I see here. That looks like a couple of engineers, but it looks like it's just coming to quickly grab this reclaim. That's a nice little move. Not only do they kill the, the naval factory, but also they get its resources. Mark's just walking forward here, stopping to put up a mix. BJ is trying to get back into the water, but we might get a denial here, thanks to the frigate from... Who's that? Signal. Meanwhile, the Zoe's come in. A mech's down, an NG down. Is that going to be another NG down? Yes, it is. This is looking pretty nice for Cups. Little air scuffle over here. Knightly versus Brink and versus Vuhudam. But I make war sends Inties in to help out. Meanwhile, that's four mexes taken out by these Zooies and they split up. A bomber comes to handle these ones, but over here these ones are going about their business unimpeded. But this is nice. BJ has picked up a bunch of tanks and he's flying them out to bring them back and drop them here and try and stop these Zooies but the Zooies have turned to head out to take out these outlying expansions and so on but he's moved it good play from BJ labs are also good at dealing with Zooies and that is how Marx is choosing to respond a couple more frigates coming down here BJ has got a naval yard up and he's trying to defend it with a torp launcher will a couple of frigates be enough Five mexes now taken out, as well as a couple of engineers for these Zooies and a radar. So that's looking pretty nice. Drinks fallen back across, having not chosen to set anything up here. Signal are trying to get some work done with this radar and setting up a mex here, but does he have any factories queued up? He does not as yet. That torpedo launch is getting work done, but it won't help against this Zooey. Meanwhile, look at that. Those Zooey's got a total of six mexes and a few engineers before the labs dealt with them. So those Zooey's pretty valuable. This, however, I don't like. Signal is on his way to T2, sure, and he's going to get there quite fast, but he's reclaiming his T1 naval yards, and I think that having frigate spam and sub-spam to maintain control all across the navy, all across the river and lake, stop enemy comms doing things like this, that's going to be crucial, and without the frigates, he's just not going to have enough. More Zooey's being dropped in to try and knock out the northern team from this watery emplacement. Meanwhile, BJ is producing spam here, but Cups has a gun comm 
coming up to face it. Sai also at T2 Navy. So we've got T2 Navy from two players here and an attempt to set up a T1 naval yard from only one player from the north and it looks like it might get shut down thanks to these Zooies and this frigate. Though between this frigate and this torp launcher they might be able to get work done. We'll see. Meanwhile Cups looks like he's going to be able to evict BJ from here because this gun con doesn't have anything to stop it but watch this. I make war has T2 air and he's sending Nothers in trying to get Sai out of the water. Immediately Sai responds by putting up a flat turret but it's going to be hard for Brink or any of the other players on the southern team to defend with Inties because that's a big horde of Inties that I make war has brought to defend it and immediately that naval yard is down to half health. Over here the Zooies are taking out the torp launcher and naval yards but BJ is building more. I think he's going to hold that. T1A coming out, flat coming up, but that naval yard is down into the red. However, the last of those chappies there might be about to die. You know, one of them comes back for another pass. Is he going to get it? 200 hit points. That naval yard goes down to 200 hit points, but the last of the Nothers dies, and at the same time, Signal gets out a cruiser. So that was a clutch save of that naval yard by the southern team, but it does mean that they have two players with T2 naval production, whereas the northern team has only one player with one miserable T1 naval yard trying to save the day, and Cups has indeed dispatched BJ from this position and is reclaiming it to go into his coffers. But not long ago, my loyal viewers may remember that we had a game in which Navy overwhelmed hover spam at T2. Are we going to see a repeat of that here or is it going to be a bit different because do you see what I see over here? I see a bunch of blazes heading out from Karl Marx. What will they get done? Meanwhile in an attempt to defend from the Navy on his side Knightley has been going for torp bombers and as yet they're reasonably unopposed. A couple of inties out from Vohodam but Brink has just got to T3. Focaccia seems to be a little earlier to T3 with a few more ASFs, but Brink's ASF should be able to clear some of this up. Though I don't know, with that many Inties, Knightley might be able to stop it. Over here, the Blazes attempt to run by, and the Cruiser will kill a decent amount of them. A Destroyer would be better, I think, but it looks like, it looks like Signal is only queuing up Cruisers. That seems to be a mistake, and that's also a cruiser from Sai. You need destroyers here. And thanks to that being only a cruiser, I think some of these are going to run in and they're going to get some work done. Some blazers have survived. They are getting in. Fokocha has sent his ASFs in to help out and it looks like he's had an air win against Brink who only has a couple of ASFs remaining. So these blazes have been taken out by size com, but these blazes, sure they're being bombed, but they're getting work done. That T2 mex is going to go down. And these T2 these T1 mexes are going to be easy pickings. Meanwhile, more blazes from Marx are crossing the river, as are Wagner's from Knightley. And I don't think that Vohodam has enough to defend against these Wagner's. I think they're going to get a decent amount of free damage. Meanwhile, the blazes are splitting up. They've taken out one T2 mechs, two T1 mechs, and I think we're about to see two more T1 mechs go out. Engineers are being shipped out in order to rebuild them in this transport by Sai, but they are shot down as ASFs come in from Fokocha and take them out. Nice air play and another wave of blazes come across the sea from Karl Marx. If at first you do succeed, that's an even more of a reason to try again. Not to be outdone, Yenzines coming across the other way from Cups. 
There is a bit of navy here from BJ, but it's not in the right place, and those Yenzines are going to get onto the land and maybe cause some damage. Over here, though, no fewer than three cruisers. That's going to mean that the Torp Bombers have a hard time of it from Knightly, but the Wagners, which are underwater, will be uncontested and could even torpedo out the cruisers if they were positioned well. Meanwhile, look at this. Five, six mechs is taken out by the Wagners and the Blazes, and Vohodam is defending with his own com. And he's also got a Corsair, though that might risk some friendly fire, given the amount of spread fire that a Corsair does. And he's going to take those out. Seven mexes. That's brutal. And look at the eco. 150 leads now for the northern team. And it's going to be mainly down to these two raids that we saw right here. So that's going to pay off quite a lot. And rather than face that destroyer and frigates, which have now come out from Sai, they're going to be a good counter to the hover. This hover is coming across to fight Cups, but Cups, who now has T2 as well as Gun on his com, has put up a T2 point defence and a T1 point defence, and he's likely to be able to fight them off a bit. However, there are exposed mexes, and these blazes are quite a number, and they're coming in to see what they can do. Over here, the top bombers go for the cruisers, and they're going to take one out, but the cruisers are easily able to shred the rest. But that's another big wave of blazes. Let's see what it does. Meanwhile, though, cups under fire from the blazes. They've taken out what the T2 point defense. They're going to take out the T1 point defense. Will they take out cups? Cups is coming back towards the water. The blazes block him a bit, but don't block him much. And he's falling back towards frigates and the destroyer. I think he'll make it out. He'll be at about half health when he does so and the destroyer opens fire on the blazes but the blazes can just run away from it and head towards Cups's base. That said, Cups's base has a lot of T2 PD and I don't think that that light gaggle of blazes is going to get very far. But yet more blazes are massing at the coast and yet more are coming across here. Meanwhile, this is quite an interesting build. Torpedo Stealth and Nano for Knightley's Com. That means that if there are only cruisers from Signal, Knightley will be able to come into the water and he'll be able to give those cruisers a right seeing tool from under the water where they won't be able to hit him. And we really need a few more of these destroyers out from, Knight from Signal. Meanwhile, Furcocha has broadswords out. I'm pretty sure he has air superiority. Let's check that. Furcocha has 20 ASFs. Oh, Brink has 23, so I tell a lie. Brink has been building up his air grid well. He's now got three air factories compared to... Okay, Furcocha's also got three. But either way, Brink does have an equivalent amount of air production to Furcocha. He's got some ASFs here, and those broadswords don't push much beyond taking out this one mechs. And of course, they've also got to be worried about all the cruisers from both Signal and Psy. But, even though the two air players are even on air, note that I Make War has also got a couple of T3 air factories up. He's got five ASFs. That contribution may swing the air battle in the northern team's favour. But we have a push coming across the water from the southern team. That's a lot of blazes and a decent chunk of Wagners, and we mustn't forget the Torpcom. But the destroyers outrange the blazes, Cyber and Cruisers outrange the blazes. Let's see how it goes. The blazes push in on the destros. Damage is going down, but the frigates are going to be a good counter to the blazes. And the cruisers are staying back and bombarding them at range. And that destro gets away, though it's into the red. 
There are also broadswords out from Brink, and Furcotcha chooses not to take the fight. The blazes retreat, leaving a bit of reclaim, but probably in a place where if anyone gets it, it's going to be Marks. Cheeky NGs coming across the river here from Furcotcha. I expect they're trying to snag a bit of reclaim, but I don't think they're going to get far, because that's a lot of Yenzines that Cups has sent out and they should be able to shut that down but there's a big air fight going down in the middle for Kocha and Brink with their ASFs but the ASFs from I Make War and the Inties from Nightly are gonna help out but it's going down over the cruisers of Signal and could that make the difference it looks to me though like Brink has lost a lot more than for Kocha. and though Sai had some Inties he didn't bring them in. Okay, looks like we've got a push coming up here. And they've seen the come in the water, but do they know he has torps? Well, now they should. However, at the same time, the push of blazes comes across the middle and Marx is getting in there there are three destroyers and a, a cruiser there and that's a Serra cruiser so he's got himself Serra T2 tech as well as Cybron tech but the Serra cruiser while it's got better anti-air and better missiles doesn't have the same direct firepower that the Cybron cruiser does and could this be enough to overwhelm Sai? It might be. He's bringing his frigates back. But over here, Knightley, who has got himself a T2 naval yard, is finding himself under a lot of pressure. And his torpedo com isn't going to be enough to save it, as there are two sub-hunters, three frigates, a destroyer, and two cruisers. And I think this naval yard is going to go down. Over here... The blazes are retreating because Brink has brought out broadswords to help and there are ever more frigates coming in from Sai. Indeed the naval yard is lost to Knightley but Knightley is going to be able to take out or at least drive back this force thanks to his Torpcom who hasn't taken any damage as yet. Meanwhile, broadswords continuing their raids over here from Furcotcha, and they have taken out some more mexes. What's there going to be to stop them? I don't see much. But again, Furcotcha doesn't want to risk it, pulls them back. I think it's time to have a quick look at everyone's eco. Brink, perfectly balanced. I would expect nothing less. Cups, quite heavily mass stored. I wonder what he's spending it on. I can't see anything obvious. Signal has the lowest eco in the game and really needs to do something about it. But look at that. That's not a great power balance. If his mass recovers, his power will suffer. Sai in a very similar position, though he is at least spending a lot of that on upgrading these mexes here. Maybe he should pause this heavily assisted factory until he's done. And Ruhodam also mass stored, though I can't really see what he's putting it into. He should probably focus on building both power and mass before he finishes off those hives. Furcutcher, also beautiful balance. Ooh, I Make War is horrifically overspending power and therefore going to be stalling mass too, and this is why he's throwing everything into the very power-intensive build of making an air grid. Knightly, quite good balance. Mark's reasonable balance, though that's a bit too heavily stalling on mass and he doesn't have much power for when he does resume mass. And BJ also quite mass stored and could probably do with a bit more power. But, looks like we need to have a look at this, so back to main view. Because, we're getting a blaze push, and that's what, a hundred blazes? How many blazes does Marks have there? 
Marx has a hundred blazes charging in on the enemy navy and sure navy counters hover but does it counter that much hover let's get a nice cinematic shot of all of that horrible hover shenanigan charging in on the navy okay well that was exciting wasn't it pro filmmaker right here but that's a lot of blazes for a navy to stop and there's a decent amount of destroyer in there there's a decent amount of cruiser in there but we are getting assistance from torp bombers sent by knightly we're getting broadswords sent by furcotcher and brink is responding with his air force and it is going down over these cruisers but i think that that's not enough i think that furcotcher is going to take the air fight especially with this help of ASFs coming in from those air yards we noted I make war building and Brink is utterly defeated in the air the blazes are overrunning the naval yard what can the southern team do? is brutal and there is actually a destroyer in there for or was a destroyer in there for Karl Marx as well but they're not the heroes here the heroes are undoubtedly these blazes which are charging in for our communist leader seizing and um, crushing the means of production and generally making a mess Signal has a UEF and a Cyber and Naval HQ, but that will behoove him very little as the Blazers swarm over it. He has escaped with some of his Navy, and there's a decent amount of torpedo power there, but don't forget that Knightley has the Stealth Nano Torpedo Com, and I think he'll be able to clear that up without a problem, but Signal has a much bigger problem on his hands because the blazes are onto his land and Cups has sent gunships to fight them but Signal is down into the red, he sent a transport but the transport died the gunships died to Falkotcha's air and Signal dies in a great, great big blaze ha 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 of fire, boom! Signal is down and out and he's actually our first ejection at 27 minutes the navy which Sai has now inherited and he needs a navy because look his own navy has been wrecked by those blazes as yet more swarm in anyway the navy that he inherited had some cruisers but not enough to stop that many broadswords or that many torp bombers let alone both and he is quickly swarmed out of the water I make war starts a nuke silo Brink started a nuke silo and has finished it but it's barely loaded that feels like a nuke of desperation not a nuke of strength and back to the blaze push it's charged through the base that used to belong to signal eating it cups has finished a chicken over here but uh, i think that might be too late to make the difference as the blazes come swarming in and Sai resigns. As does Brink and I think it's all going to be over now. I mean there's a chicken there supported by hover flak which could get something done but with the two lowest rated players on the team left against the full northern team I think we're going to be safe to speed it up a bit. So we'll do that and just glance at the obliteration of the south by the waves of blazes and broadswords. How would you have stopped that blaze push? I certainly think that more frigates would have done it. I said right at the start that I was unhappy with Signal destroying his T1 naval yards when he would need frigates to control the hover. That's a lot of strats coming across from Furcotcher. 
and they'll probably get a bit of stuff done. I would have them targeting that chicken myself. BJ hiding from it in the water, the chicken not stopping to try and stomp. But the Navy is shooting at it, support commanders are shooting at it. I mean, I might get something done actually, but there are now straps on it and Cups resigns, leaving the lowest rated player to either make a famous last stand or resign. So, last time we saw Navy versus Hover, it was the Navy that won, but in this game, undoubtedly, Blaze's MVP, the Hover wins the day, and it's going to be a victory for the North team. That said, the South team also needed a lot more air. Brink, I think, could have taken for Kotje that Arthwasher is going to finish, finish the job. I think Brink could have taken for Kotje, but with I Make War contributing a significant amount of air and ASF of his own, and Knightley never letting up with the interceptor production, that was also a hole in their stratagem. So, tell me what you thought of that in the comments below. Tell me whether you enjoy a bit of hover spam. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.